The biggest challenge for treatment of inherited disease really is finding the patients. Um, still to this day, it is oftentimes true that people don't get referred to ocular genetics specialists because of the fact that people who follow them up say there's nothing we can do for you. It makes no sense to take a blood sample and send it off for genetic testing. But genetic testing already now is of value to patients. Even if you don't think about gene therapy, because obviously for that it is extremely important, but if you think about procreation and selection of embryos or prenatal diagnosis in the classic sense, we can offer that to patients already since years. And so it does make sense to actually have people refer them through to the ocular geneticist. Once we have the patients in, we take blood, we counsel them, and then obviously if we make a diagnosis, we can use that. And with the advent of gene therapy being um, here now with Luxterna and other trials that are proving to be efficacious, I think it is of utmost importance that we get them all genotyped. It is a quest that I've had for long, um, and I still have a dream that this will happen. So I've given a couple of presentations, mostly on uh, the product known as Luxterna, which is for retigene Neparvovec. It is basically an adeno-associated virus type 2 that is a carrier or a little FedEx truck for a novel copy, this time a good copy, of the RP65 gene. It encodes the protein called RP65 as well. What does it do? It recycles vitamin A at the level of the retinal pigment epithelium. And this is an essential step if we are to reuse vitamin A, which is essential to translate light into electrical signals, which we do continuously so at the level of the photoreceptors. With two mutations, one from mum, one from dad, you do not have sufficient working of that enzyme and you can't recycle vitamin A, and you're essentially blind only if there's incredible sun, intense sunshine, you can see something, but not much. As soon as it's less than intense sunshine, you're actually completely blind. Foretigine Neparvovec does away with that. It doesn't make them fighter jet pilots. It doesn't normalize vision, because you start off with a retina that has been degenerate for some time, um, but is sufficiently flexible enough to increase uh, functional vision. What do we mean by functional vision? It is not necessarily what we know from Lucentis and Aflibercept and all these typical drugs that we use for AMD. It is indeed not best corrected visual acuity that improves significantly. It is, however, the sensitivity to light of the retina that changes dramatically and makes for the patient an enormous difference because it increases navigational vision. Elsewhere in this meeting, I've learned um, from my colleagues who are occupied doing beautiful studies with gene therapy in achromatopsia, in choroideremia, in X-linked retinitis pigmentosa, um, and other studies ongoing with gene therapy, real gene therapy, are really interesting and I do believe that some of them will make it to a phase three and then finally eventually to a drug that is on the market. Another area that is quite impressive and uh, evolving is something I spoke about and some others as well, is the antisense oligonucleotides. And antisense oligonucleotides are actually small RNA molecules that patch off specifically an area where a specific mutation in a specific gene sits and actually compensates, compensate for the negative effect of that mutation, thereby correcting the production of the protein and the patient seems to do better. We were participating in trials in phase one trials, in a phase one trial for CEP290 related liver congenital amaurosis together with two centers in the US. Uh, we, that is Ghent University Hospital with University of Pennsylvania and the University Hospitals of Iowa. 
and the preliminary results were published in Nature Medicine earlier this year and it seems to work. This technology is further down the line going to go into a phase 3 trial now and it's also going to kick off for Usher syndrome type 2 and H2A related retinitis pigmentosa. So all in all, in conclusion, for gene therapy, I think, and genetic therapy, because AONs, antisense oligonucleotides, are not really gene therapy, they're genetic therapy, um, adapting basically what's going wrong and correcting for it, rather than delivering a novel copy of a gene. But in general, I'm very enthusiastic. It's quite amazing to see, even at 8 o'clock this morning in a genetic session, we were completely full. And this, uh, five years ago, would never have happened. So I'm positive for the future. Patients are very excited. Um, I presented the results in 13 uh, patients that we treated in Philadelphia. And all of these patients are excited. They do have objectively measured also a, a considerable increase in retinal sensitivity as measured with an, an, um, a measure that we call full field sensitivity testing. And you can clearly see that there's the statistically significant improvement, but they are extremely happy. One of the um, young patients, a six-year-old girl, uh, was treated by my colleague Al McGuire, who is the surgeon doing the uh, injections. And he told me, but I, I seem to have given her a personality transplant. So it does change human behavior. Uh, if all of a sudden you are able to see you standing there, even with the spotlights here in this environment, this is not enough for someone with RP65 mutations without the treatment. And that person would be able to say, you are a young blonde lady with blue eyes now, and she would never have been able to say that before.